Okay, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about the manufacturing of this pencil box uh, in Fusion 360. So stick around, it's going to be a hoot. So step one is we've done the design. We have two parts, the top and the bottom. Um, this is a great assignment because it gives you an opportunity to learn on one and then do the op, uh, operation again on another one to reinforce it because essentially the top and bottom are identical parts. So I'm doing this backwards. The bottom looks like this and the top looks like this. We're going to start with op one. I forgot the chamfer. I'll have to add that before we do this top, which would be the inside of this. And you basically apply the same strategies to the bottom. And then I will do op two, which would be the top of the top. And you apply the same strategies minus a few features because we don't have an engraving to do or a chamfer for op two of the bottom. So let's get into this. Okay, to get started with the top, we got to flip it over. So we're looking at it from the bottom. We're going to cut out the pocket here first um, and get the sides all profiled down before we uh, move on to flipping it over and doing op two. So first thing we have to do is the setup, or first thing we have to do is jump over into manufacturing. And then we're gonna need to, we work with inches in this class, so we're gonna go ahead and split, split the inches. And then the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and do the setup. So uh, we're gonna click on the setup button. In my class, um, op one always has the origin at the center of the part on the top. Op two is always the center of the part on the bottom. I'll explain that more later. Um, we got to orient the axis in the proper direction, so I'm going to drop down to the ZX. My X is in the right direction, my Y is in a workable position, but my Z is going the wrong direction. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit flip, and now this is a better approach. We are going to select, uh, we'll come back to this. Um, we're going to go ahead and go to stock body so we have it. So we're done with tab one, we actually don't need to adjust this. Uh, tab two, we're going to fix to fixed size stock. This stock is seven by two by one, so that's all perfect. The difference is we do not set the stock in the center. I always set it to the top and then offset it 0 0.02 so that there's a small amount that has to be shaved off to give us a clean face in the facing operation. So we have that and you notice that also leaves a stock down here to grab onto the top with so that um, we can hold it in place. So last step is we need to come across this is going to be 22.2.1. This would be top op one, and then I always do my last name so that we know whose it is. And this work offset would be G55, so in Fusion, G00, or zero is 54. One is also 54, so two would be G55. And we click OK. Now, um, because we're going to end up with a lot of setups in this drawing, I'm going to go ahead and name this top op one so that um, I know what I'm doing. So we now have the setup, the block mat, the stock matches the block we're going to cut. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Don't forget, if you're in my class, you need to upload from Schoology the tool library, the Haas standard tool library we use, which has tool number one, which is a three inch face mill for this project. It also has a two inch face mill for a different machine, a three eighths end mill, a quarter inch chamfer mill, and a quarter inch end mill. And you will be making, um, in another video, you'll have to watch how to create a tool. We'll need a tool number five, which is a, a one eighth inch end mill for doing the um, lettering on the top. But we'll get to that in another video. So um, you should have already uploaded that. Um, so let's get started. We're gonna go facing, and we are gonna select from that tool library um, the uh, Mitsubishi, Mitsubishi uh, three inch face mill and we're going to go ahead and select and realistically we could go through all these tabs but there's nothing going to change it automatically picks up the surfaces you want so you just go ahead and click OK and there is our face looks great now most of the material has to come out of the inside so we're going to um, Go ahead and attack that first, leaving a thick wall on the outside, then we'll clean that up at the end. So we're going to go um, 2D Adaptive, and we are going to now select our 3 8 end mill. So standard uh, tools, 
three eighths end bolt tool number two. Um, it does not matter on this machine because the speeds we're feeding it at, which yes, are very conservative for those people out in YouTube lad, but this is a school setting and I'd rather be slow than break stuff. Um, is uh, the same for both our mini mills. If we were um, for actually for all three of our mills that we have. So we don't need to select which one we're actually using. But later on, for example, when we do the eighth inch end mill, we will have to select the specific machine because our machines have different spindles. So we've selected that. Our contour, we're going to select the bottom inside edge. Um, nothing has to be changed here. We're not making any manipulations to the heights or the offs or the clearances. So we go to tabs. Um, we are once again being conservative. So we are going to do 0.1 maximum step over um, to uh, reduce the loads on the um, machine. So optimal load is in the clearance. If we're making if we're making a shape like this in our cutter, which is round, right here. How much of that cutter does it engage every time it makes a pass, right? This isn't the way the actual machine will make it, but you get my point. How much of the cutter? We're using a 3 8 cutter. Normally, the rule is about 1 3rd. So, so 1 3rd of 3 8 would be about 0.15. Um, because I am, want to be conservative, I teach in high school, and we're trying to limit the chances of things going wrong. I prefer to use, instead of a division of uh, 0.3, I like to use 0.25 or a quarter, and thus I bring it down to 0.1, just to be a little bit on the safe side. So that's a little bit about what optimal load is. Let's uh, flip back over to Fusion. So we've lowered that optimal load, and we go ahead and click OK. And you'll see that it's helixing in. Um, to the part, and then we're do we're getting a nice uh, adaptive clearing. We are leaving 0 0.02 on the walls, or 20 thou, and 20 thou on the floor for us to clean up, which is our next step, which we will be doing with a pocket. Same pro same tool, so we don't adjust that. Same profile, so we don't have to really make an adjustment there. And nothing changes here, but we are going to adjust stock to leave. We aren't going to leave any stock. This is the finish pass. And we are going to adjust the helical ramp. And this is just for um, the speed. We are going to change this from 2 to 10 degrees. And the major difference here is you'll notice it goes about, about three times to enter into the stock. We're doing this in case one of these get out of order in a student setting. It'll steal helical in, and it can do this. I've tested it, but um, it's pretty hard on the cutter, I'll hear it and I'll tell you to stop, versus this one that's helicing in like 15 or 20 times. So if it's done properly, helicing in, it's just cutting through air, so it's no big deal. But we can see here that we are cutting a final finish pass. So our next step is to um, start working on the outside. So we're going to do an adaptive clearing on the outside to get rid of most of the material. So we're select this outside edge. We are going to stay with our 3 8 inch cutter. We're going to come to heights. Now we do need to adjust the height here. We have a chamfer modeled on this. We need to get the cutter from this line to slightly below this line. Now my chamfer is a 0.075, I believe. So I'm going to need to add uh, material to it. Now the problem with Fusion right now is if this is the kind of profile shape on the side, we've selected to pick here. But adaptive clearing is going to leave material both on the axial bottom and on the wall. I'm okay with it on the wall, but I don't want it on the bottom. In reality, I want to actually move this line down so it's somewhere right down here. Well, more like right there. So to do that, I either have to account for the space here plus adding this space here, or I need to get rid of this space here and then just add this space here. So this is normally 0 0.02 or 20 thou. This is going to be 75 thou. And then I'm going to add another 10 thou to it. So in reality, what has to happen, I need to add 105 thousandths to get below this. Or I turn off the axial uh, compensation and then just add 85 thousandths, which is what we're going to do. 
So if we hop back over to Fusion, here we're going to add negative 0 0.8, 0 0.085 thou to it. And then under passes, we are going to turn this off to 0. And what you should have seen is the toolpath line should be slightly below the actual bottom of our part. And this is important for OP2 when we flip the part over. We're going to reduce this optimal load down to 0.1, and we're going to go ahead and click OK. And you can see that that blue line appeared slightly below the chamfer on the part. Perfect. Next step is we are going to do the cleanup pass. We're going to use the same 85,000 deep. So we're going to do a uh, contour. We're going to select here. Um, we're going to push it down a negative 0 0.85 deep. We are not going to adjust anything else in this uh, setting, and we are going to click OK. Once again, this should get us down below that chamfer. So our part is pretty much machined other than this inner groove, which is the mating surface of our part. And the goal is to get a nice, snug, push-together fit, ideally one that doesn't fall out when we flip it over. Okay, so to do that, we have to hold a very tight tolerance in here in its relationship to this. Now, they've been modeled to a theoretical um, degree, meaning that this wall is uh, 100 thou thick, meaning 50, this, there was a 50 thou shoulder cut here, and we should cut a 50 thou shoulder here. In reality, if we made that, it would go together and never come apart. You force it together and never pull it apart. So we have to actually adjust that in the machine to make a nice fit that will stay together. So how do we do that? Well, we're going to do a contour along that edge with our 3 8 cutter. Notice we're using the same cutter all along. Um, we are then going to jump over to uh, height. All this doesn't change. We're going to go to passes. And here is where we can make an adjustment. Right now, the computer, this computer, is doing all the calculations for the cut pass, the tool pass, um, how uh, the G code. What we want to do is we want to enable the controller on the machine to make small adjustments. So to do that, we are going to use where. And that will allow us to tweak numbers within our controller that will allow us to overcut or undercut this 50 thou step over so that we hit a number that produces a nice tight fit, but not too tight a fit. So that's a very important step. And on the bottom, we are going to have to apply it to the same area when we do this little step over. So uh, now we have that done, we're going to go ahead and click OK. Okay, now this op one is done. We can go ahead and, oh, I take that back. It's not done. We forgot the chamfer. We need a chamfer here in order to, to make a nice, a nice easy attachment so it's easy to line these up. If not, we would have a problem. It would take forever to get them perfectly aligned, and they wouldn't go together well. So we're going to add a chamfer here. We're going to go ahead and use, because it's modeled, we are going to use a uh, contour. We're going to select the bottom edge of the chamfer. We're going to switch to the chamfer tool, which in our tool library is tool number three. And we are going to go over to chamfer offsets. And this is under the passes command. Now, some champ this chamfer mill happens to have a flat bottom, but I want to go over something with uh, you so you understand. When you do a chamfer, you're knocking off this corner. So you're trying to make this shape. The chamfer mill is typically pointed, like so. And the fusion wants to take this point and put it right there and apply the chamfer mill like this. Now, the problem is the very tip of the mill is the weakest part. Most likely to break, most, most likely to have a problem. What we want to do is we want to shift that tip over and down so that our chamfer mill is running something like, well, we would want it to go beyond that, something like that. 
Okay, so we're using a stronger part of our cutter. So if we move over to fusion, we can do a chip tip offset. And in this case, I'm going to do 0 0.04 or 40 thousandths of a tip offset. And you will notice when I hit OK, you'll notice that it moved the uh, blue line over and down. Now we're totally done. We can go ahead and run a quick simulation. I'm going to speed this up because it's very time consuming. So it's going to run through. And there our part is done. And we can go back by clicking here and slowing it down and hitting play. We can check our chamfer and we can zoom in. And you'll notice that the cutter is using a much stronger part of uh, its edge in order to do that chamfer. I mean, this is not a huge strain on the cutter, but it's always a smart idea. So this is done, and we are ready to now post-process it. So we are going to go ahead and hit post. And here is going to come up with our window. We Our machines work best with the Haas uh, pre-NGC controller post, even though we have new next-generation controllers. This one still seems to work the best. But you would go in here and find your machine. If you're running a Fanuc or Fadal or a DMG Mori or... Um, an Akuma, you should be able to find a Mazak. You should be able to find your post processor, at least the low, the ones. You can also download ones um, that can get it. But we're going to run that um, Haas pre-ng control. It should automatically populate the uh, po uh, the program number and also populate kind of the comment line. The last thing you have to do is specify where you want it to be outputted to. I always tell the students output it either directly to the flash drive or to the downloads. Um, then you know where it's going. And downloads is a great place because in the future when you don't need this, we just delete it away. So we go ahead, go ahead and hit select folder. And then I always like the kids to turn on chip transport because our machines have it. And it helps keep the machines cleaner. And then we would click uh, post. And it is going to generate a code. We can click view code and it will show us popped up on my other screen. It will show us the code if we wanted to preview it. For example, I know that it needs to be G55 and that worked out. Everything else looks good. And we can now take this up to the simulator in the front of the room and check it. Have me look over it. I am looking for this Z negative 2.0. Uh, sorry, negative 0. Negative 0. 0. 0.02 or 20 thou. And I am going to scroll down to the very bottom and look at your second or your third to last chamfer or contour. And I am making sure that we get a Z negative value of 183,000. Um, I didn't say that right. 100, 830,000 is what I meant to say. Um, to make sure that you have done all of the settings correctly. Um, that's how you do um, op one of the uh, pencil box. You can apply these same strategies to up one of the bottom. It is the same uh, basic process, except for the difference here is you're cutting this last one on the outside, not the inside. Um, and there is not a chamfer that necessarily needs to be applied to this edge. So you can leave off that chamfer and you can do the same contour here. Don't forget the wear. Thanks for watching. Hope you learned something, and I'll catch you in the next one.